Hey everyone, my name is Fluxtrance and I'm collaborating with Paradox Interactive to bring you the fourth part in my map making series for City Skylines. In today's episode, we'll take a look at making maps set in the tropics. Just like episode three, this video will focus primarily on terraforming and landscaping. So if you haven't seen my first two episodes yet, which cover the basics of map making, I definitely recommend checking those out first. Now you may also remember the beach tutorial I made a while back, which was also published to this channel. And in that tutorial, we covered quite a few different techniques used to create beaches, the surrounding ocean floor, and the terrain that approaches the beach. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I definitely recommend giving that video a watch as well. But in this video, we'll move away from those topics and take a closer look at the inner island terrain and dressing it with foliage. So similar to my mountain tutorial, the first step is always to find a reference on Google Maps. Just like last time, we'll pop on the satellite view and use the control key to pan around our source material, which in this case is Hawaii. You'll notice a couple things right away. Firstly, tropical islands are packed with foliage. And this presents a challenge in city skylines since we need to consider the number of objects we use to prevent drops in frame rate. And second, Hawaii's mountains in particular tend to sprawl outwards radially with sharp edges and lots of channels from runoff erosion. So back in game, I'll start with the basic island we used in the beach tutorial and use the techniques we talked about last episode to replicate some of the patterns we found in our source material. And the big thing to note here is that we're planning on completely covering these mountains in foliage, so even if we were able to disable the steepness constraint on the foliage placement with prop and tree anarchy, the forest coverage would still look spotty if we go too steep on our mountains. So for this reason, I'm trying to keep our mountains gradual while putting extra emphasis on cutting into the ridges with the pole tool to create all those runoff channels we saw in our source material. With our mountains complete, it's time for foliage. Aside from creating grassy plains, this is perhaps one of the most difficult natural looks to pull off in city skylines while keeping our object count low. So to achieve this, we'll use a careful selection of custom assets combined with the prop and tree anarchy mod, just to make sure we can plop these things close enough together to create that dense forest look. With that said, I'll start with a low poly filler tree. If you opt to go the custom objects route, this is the absolute most important part. Try to find an asset with as much ground cover and as few tries as possible. And this is really no easy task, so you can find the full collection of assets used in a link in the description if you're curious. We'll use this filler tree to create a nice even ground layer of foliage, and then with this filler in place, it's time to start adding some other elements to break the monotony. You'll notice that different types of foliage grow in different conditions, so it's common to find off-color foliage growing in the valleys, and drier, more resilient foliage growing up on the ridges. Now personally, I like to place a lot of these with the Prop and Tree Anarchy mod by hand, but you may also find the Move It Cluster trick that we talked about in the Beaches tutorial to be helpful for plopping these in large areas. It's also a good idea to plop down some larger trees and some bits of color here and there to kind of break up some of this repetition. Now I definitely can't emphasize this next part enough. With each pass of a new type of foliage, it's a really good idea to save the game. This way, if you notice your frame rate drop lower than you'd like, you can just roll back and try again. This is a careful balancing act that often takes a few attempts to get right, so the most important thing to be mindful of is asset try count. You can often find try counts listed in the assets description, so take care in using low try assets for the majority of your filler, and only use high try objects for critical areas like along rivers, or in areas you think will be seen up close. Taking all these things into consideration, you'll eventually find yourself with the perfect balance of detail and frame rate. And this is no small feat, so take some pride in knowing that you've likely pushed the game further than most people would ever bother to. With that said, I hope you found some of these tips helpful. Join me next time as we take on what I consider to be the most difficult natural landscape to recreate in City Skylines, and it's probably not what you're imagining. If you've seen my videos on Beryllium Flats, you'll know that I'm talking about grassy plains. This environment can be deceivingly tricky, so next time we'll dive even deeper into how to optimize foliage placement to keep frame rate high while covering large areas in trees, brush, and grass. But in the meantime, subscribe here for more tutorials like this one, and as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.